In this video, we're going to learn how to do full damage in Godot. Here we have a basic scene with some platforms to test things out. I assume you already know what this stuff is. And here we have this orange kinematic body that's going to be our test subject. Again, pretty basic stuff. So let's begin by attaching a script to the kinematic body. We're going to write some basic gravity code by writing var gravity equals 20, var gravity vec equals vector 3, and you can watch my video on gravity and jumping if you don't know what's going on. I find that a good way to handle fall damage is with a state machine. I have a video on state machines if you need more info. But anyways, we're going to create an enumerator, or enum, call it ground state, and in the curly brackets we're going to give it three different states, grounded, midair, and touchdown. And I'll be going through all of these in just a second. We're also going to write var player state equals ground state dot grounded to keep track of which state the character is in. Next create a new function func physics process delta, and to create our state machine, write match player state. Now we'll code some basic gravity behavior for each state. We'll write ground state dot grounded, which is when the character is on the ground. And for this state, we'll write gravity vec equals vector three dot zero. If not is on floor, player state equals ground state dot midair. Then we'll write ground state dot midair, gravity vec plus equals vector three dot down times gravity times delta. If is on floor, player state equals ground state dot touchdown. So basically, if the player is on the ground, gravity will be shut off since we don't need it. And if the player is not on the ground, then it'll go into the midair state, in which case gravity vec, which is the strength of gravity, will continually increase until the player hits the ground, where it will enter the touchdown state. Touchdown is a special state, and I'll explain why we need it in just a sec, but in it we're going to write, if gravity vec dot length greater than or equals to 20, print fall damage taken. So when the character is in the air, the strength of gravity will continually increase in order to roughly simulate the acceleration of falling objects in real life. The moment the character touches the ground and enters the touchdown state, the game will check if the strength of gravity vec, or its length, is greater than some arbitrary threshold that we set. In this case, it's 20, but you can change this to any amount you want. And if it's greater than this threshold, then it will tell the game to print the message to indicate that fall damage has been taken. And we're not quite done yet, but to demonstrate this in action, we're going to write move and slide with snap, gravity vec, vector 3 dot down, vector 3 dot up. Then if we run the game, the box will fall, and when it hits the ground, the console will spam a bunch of fall damage taken messages. Of course, this is a problem because we only want the character to take fall damage one time when it hits the floor. And so to fix that, we're going to write player state equals ground state dot grounded. This way, the moment the player hits the floor and enters the touchdown state, it will check the length of gravity vec one time, apply any damage if necessary, then immediately switch over to the grounded state so that it can no longer take damage. So let's say our character has a health variable with 100 health. We can just write health minus equals 10 and change this print message to health. And when we run the game, when the player hits the ground, we can see it now only has 90 health. Or if you want the damage to change dynamically based on the distance of the fall, instead of hard coding a damage amount, you can just change it to gravity vec dot length. So when you run the game, you can see that it takes something like 29 point something something damage and it'll change depending on the height. If you move the character down low enough, it won't take any damage at all, which makes sense. And that's about it. You shouldn't have any trouble applying this concept to a first person or third person character controller, but feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, bell, links to my Twitter and Discord down below, and as always, have a nice day.